welcome back to Grandmommy's Kitchen, where food is all about love and everybody's welcome. And you know what? We're in the midst of summer, and it's time for all the harvest and the fresh produce to start coming in. And last week we talked about those beautiful Michigan peaches. I've got those all done, packed up and in the freezer, 21 quarts, and now we're moving on to tomatoes. Beautiful, gorgeous. I mean, really, does anything taste better than a fresh tomato right out of the garden, especially in Michigan. We have good black soil that makes great tomatoes. So let's talk about tomatoes. Other than a delicious tomato sandwich or slicing them up on your salad, when they start coming in, they come in by loads. So let me give you a really easy way to preserve those tomatoes, whether they're um, grape tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, uh, Roma tomatoes, round tomatoes, whatever you have, here is the quick and easy. Take your tomatoes, cap them off, wash them, cap them off, quarter them up, throw them in your food processor. I like to just absolutely puree mine, that's what I've done here, throw them in a quart bag and put them in the freezer. This is ready to put in chili, to put in spaghetti sauce, soups, whatever you want to use it for. Now, if you like yours chunky, then just use the pulse button on your food processor and you don't have to go absolutely puree with it. See how easy that is and oh how good it's going to taste and you know exactly what's in there. You haven't added any preservatives, you haven't added any extra ingredients. It's just pure good red Michigan tomatoes. So there's my tip for this time on Grandmommy's Kitchen. I hope you're subscribing, I hope you're sharing, I hope you're liking commenting love to hear from you all right time to continue on with the nine fruits of the spirit the spirit being the spirit of god that dwells in us so far we have covered love joy peace patience and today we're going to talk about kindness i hope since um the last session that we spent together that you've been thinking about that two word description I gave you for peace. I've thought about it a lot this week because when you bring that to mind, man, it's almost like you just calm down when you say it and, and let me remind you what it is. Peace is undisturbed composure. Regardless of what's going on around you, the chaos in the world, the craziness at your workplace, whatever you're encountering, because His Spirit is in us, we have undisturbed composure. That is peace. So that's only two words to memorize. Keep those in mind. And when you feel yourself getting anxious or nervous or fearful, just say, mm, undisturbed composure, because the Spirit of God is in me. So today, kindness. Now remember, the primary scripture is in Galatians 5.22. That's where it lists the nine fruits of the Spirit. So kindness. A couple of the Hebrew words about kindness are hesed, which equals grace, charity, mercy. Aren't those lovely words? You just feel good saying those. Grace, charity, mercy. It means slow to anger or an act of compassion, a generous disposition or tender hearted. All those words just saying them kind of makes you want to go, oh, isn't that sweet? But with the Spirit of God in us, that's how kindness should show from our actions and from our words. We should be tender-hearted. We should have a generous disposition. We should show grace and mercy. Uh, one of the other uh, interesting things is the word kindness only appears four times in the New Testament. Isn't that interesting? It refers to acts of kindness or acts that are esteemed to be good. So again, isn't it interesting that these fruits of the Spirit sound like emotional things, but they're really actions. Love is what you do, not what you say. So, a generous spirit. Have you ever heard the term someone has a good eye? Well, that good eye definition means that you express it by bestowing kindness on other people, that it's a practice of loving people. It's benevolence, and it's regarded as a sense of duty, which of course it should be for those of us who have the Spirit of God in us. It can be translated as compassion, 
all just words that by saying them, it even changes, changes your mindset and how you feel. So kindness, has said in the Hebrew, is the fruit of the Spirit for this week. I challenge you this week, practice kindness. Start with your family. Sometimes that's the hardest place to start because we see these people all the time. Sometimes it's easier to be kind to a stranger because you don't know their history. But practice that mercy and kindness, compassion this week. Every day, find a few situations to show kindness. Remember, it's a choice to choose to be kind, but the Spirit has given you the ability to do it. You have to choose to cooperate with the Spirit and express that kindness. Thank you for being here today. I just love the Word of God, and I love sharing it with you. And I hope little by little that you're beginning to grow and learn and express all these fruits that the Spirit gives us when He abides in us. So, let's just have a moment of prayer, and we'll go on from there. Heavenly Father, you are a mighty, wonderful, glorious, lovely Father, and we're so thankful to know you. And we're so thankful that you want to know us and that you've invited us to come into your kingdom. Thank you for your spirit that dwells in us. That's so amazing. We thank you. We're so grateful that your spirit can reside in us. Thank you for giving us these fruits within us so that as we express them to the world, as, as our compassion and our kindness show, that people will encounter you. We're doing the act, but it's you in us that we want them to encounter and know so that they too can find peace in their lives. Lord, we thank you for this beautiful life that you've given us, that in the midst of all the turmoil of this world and our daily lives, that we can be rested, we can be composed, and experience peace all because of you. In Jesus' name we always pray. Amen. Thanks for being here, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.